Hey everybody, it's Eric here uh, with Steel Wheels, and I am sitting next to the monument erected in uh, 1953 um, to commemorate the 100 year anniversary of the Grattan Massacre. That happened about a half mile northwest of here. Um, and uh, this is a really important event in uh, the history of the West. Um, it is the beginning of the war with the Plains Indians, the Lakota, and a few other uh, smaller uh, tribes that uh, were, were also out here. Um, it's really, uh, it's a pivotal moment in US history that occurred here. Um, and I'm going to be animating it and doing stories. So I came out to get some photos of the location and uh, just maybe reflect for a few moments on um, the research that I've done on this project. Um, there's a number of things that I've come across. So obviously, I'm going to go through a lot of the stuff in the video and uh, go over the history of this site and what happened. But uh, Malcolm Gladwell talks about how um, systems don't fail uh, because of one error. Um, and I can't think of a, they, they, they fail because of at least seven or eight errors. I can't think of a better example in Western history of so many things going wrong that all led up to just an absolutely disastrous and tragic uh, end for 29 uh, infantrymen in the U.S. Army and uh, then kicked off a war between the U.S. Army, the U.S. government, and the Lakota Sioux that dragged on for almost 50 years. Um, and I'm going to be covering a lot of the history that goes along with that. I have a truck, so I'm going to try and wrap this up before the truck gets here, and then I'll have to shut up. So Malcolm Gladwell talks about how when something, when um, tragedy or a catastrophe happens. Usually it's because a number of things went wrong, uh, not just one thing. And in the case of the Grattan Massacre, that's exactly what happened. You have Grattan, was, who was a, a brevet lieutenant, uh, which meant he didn't have a commission, he didn't have an attachment. So he had a motivation to prove himself. He had no real connection or um, understanding of, uh, of the Lakota. He had only been out at this post for a short period of time, uh, recently out from West Point. Um, the Commander Fleming, or he wasn't really the commander, he was a, another lieutenant. The commander was away from the post, so he was filling in. Um, so he kind of, uh, they knew each other at West Point, both Fleming and, and Grattan. So there was an interpersonal thing happened there where one person wasn't clearly in charge of the other person. Um, then there's the fact that he took more people with him than he should have taken with him. There's the fact that he rode into a village, which is a bunch of teepees or lodges, as they're referred to, um, like 600 lodges, each one representing between three to five people uh, and roughly two warriors per lodge. So with 30 men, they rode into a field of 1,200 um opponents with two cannons and then they fired on the chief while they were completely surrounded the people in the army didn't notice that the um that the lakota warriors were rounding up the horses and getting them winded which is a, a term that they use for getting the horse ready to run there was the fact that uh, it was reported by the high forehead that uh, even the infantry had uh, taken a little nip uh, in the wagon on the way out uh, and that they were actually drinking and passing the bottle around. It wasn't uncommon to drink during the day uh, in the 1800s. Now, as far as drinking, you've got Auguste Lucien, who was trashed, and he had a serious axe to grind with the Sioux. He had lost um, some, some stock the year uh, a, a few weeks earlier, in which case Grattan had given him a hard time for it and called him a coward for not chasing down the Sioux when he knew that they were baiting him in. And if he would have followed them any further, that, that would have been more trouble for him. So actually, it was a wise choice for, for uh, August Lucien to decide not to, not to go after uh, the people that stole his cattle and his horses earlier.
Then there's the fact that, that you have this depredations policy with, in which um, there's supposed to be uh, reparations made to uh, anybody who has stuff stolen from them on, in, by Indians on the Oregon Trail. The depredations policy was a policy set aside to uh, compensate uh, immigrants who had been robbed on the trail by uh, bands of uh, bands of Indians. <laughs> um, so, so you have this idea that they're going to get money back. So they reported this, and this should have been handled by the Indian agent uh, Whitfield, but Whitfield was late showing up. Oh, here's another problem. Whitfield was late showing up. The CDA 1851 had given out annuities to the Lakota for the basically the injustice of having the prime habitat along the Platte destroyed by the immigrants coming through and using up all the lumber, using up all the or the timber that were on the uh, and the game eating. I mean, it just it was absolutely devastating to the habitat here. Uh, and this is a very arid environment, so this doesn't this environment doesn't support a lot of people. So, uh, you the the reason that the Lakota were even here was because they were waiting for Whitfield. They were hungry. They were starving. Then you've got High Forehead, who had an issue with Fleming because Fleming had come after his family and and killed a few of his brothers, a couple of his brothers, in a skirmish a year earlier. So High Forehead was pissed. High Forehead, from some of the reports, actually walked up to the Mormon trail, and then the Mormon trains did the Mormons didn't lose their cow to, to him. He walked up and actually wanted to assault one of the one of the people in the Morgan tra- uh, in the train. He shot an arrow at him and missed. He said, "God is with you, and since God is with you, that's okay. I will leave you alone, but I will take one of your cows." And that's what he did. There's a lot of uh, like almost a dozen different reasons or things that should have been noticed that, that weren't right. August Lucien talking trash, being drunk as an interpreter, um, the ego and arrogance of John Grattan um, as a brevet lieutenant who didn't have a commission. So many things led up to the Grattan Massacre. And the takeaway from the Grattan Massacre, well, that's worked its way into the mythology of our understanding of the American West. Come here, Lily. And um, I grew up on that mythology, but I'm discovering that there are other stories. Um, and these stories are so close to home. Might as well come out, find out about them. So I'm going to write up the events of the Grattan Massacre and, and animate it. I'm looking forward to doing that. Put in some of the artwork that's uh, that I'm generating for this. Come here, sweetheart. Come here. Uh, but I think this is a great example of how when things go wrong, they go wrong because there's a bunch of signs that were ignored, that if any of those signs had been paid attention to, if they had just waited for John Whitfield to show up, if they hadn't sent the army to enforce um, um, something that they wasn't even in their jurisdiction to enforce, they weren't supposed to send the army out to to handle depredations or, or people having stuff stolen from them. That was an issue that was supposed to be handled by the Indian agent, and the annuities were going to be withheld from that. So even the charge of Grattan going into the village, he, it was stupid of him to do so. Conquering Bear was a friend of the whites at the time and was doing everything he could to keep a peaceful relationship going. And when he decided that, look, John, this guy, this Lieutenant John Grattan's not listening, turned to walk away. One of um, the infantrymen fired it and hit him. And uh, it all fell apart pretty quickly after that. So I'm interested in telling the story. It's gruesome, but I'm more interested in the, the interpersonal stuff that happened between all the, all the people that were here. And um, what an amazing moment in time. All right, well. I don't know how long it's going to take to put this together. So, best I, I've got all my pictures. Time for me to head home or head on out. Take care. This is Eric with Steel Wheels. If you're interested in following more about Wyoming history, the history of the West, um, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, stay tuned for more uh, from Steel Wheels about uh, Fort Laramie, 
the Grand Massacre, and uh, I think the next one I'm going to be doing is something on the handcart tragedy, tragedy of 1856, which in a way is connected to the handcart massacre. So, uh, all right, well, time for me to get back in the car and get rolling. Thanks for listening to me. Steel Wheels out. Take care.